care if I leave this stuff here? Huh? Yeah. All right, guys, can you hear me? Um, I'll turn on the chat so you guys can hear me. We're recording now. Um, so you guys can talk. So, okay, so you guys can hear me, right? Okay, good. So we're going to begin. Uh, we're going to begin walking down the street. Um, and here, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of nutcrackers going down the street. And if you look here, here's an eye doctor right in front of the ACE optometry place. Okay, so that's kind of neat. Um, so they make it like an eye doctor nutcracker. And if you keep walking down the street even more, you're going to see a celebrity. You see a king or a prince or somebody like that, right? That's somebody. And then even, even sponsors get into it. Here's a sponsor of SA, whatever that stands for. We don't have a sign here, so I'm not 100% sure what he stands for, but you keep on walking. I mean, look at this guy. This guy has like headphones on and glasses. He's an auctioneer. So this guy is an auctioneer. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what he's doing. He's an auctioneer. Keep moving down. And we actually have a, a mascot of an old high school right here, the Mingo Indians. And that was an old high school way before I was born. So that's that's what that was. That's what that is. And if you keep walking even more, you get some cowboys. Here's the cowboy. As you can see, he has rope and a gun. And right next to him, of course, without a cowboy, you have to have an Indian, right? And this guy, right in front of the wine place, he has the bottles of wine. And so does this guy. I did hear that there was a Wizard of Oz coming up. So that'll be pretty neat to see. This guy, so can anybody tell me what this guy is playing? Any guess? Drums, an accordion, that's right. Good job, Gabriel, that's an accordion. And here are some two people dressed up. They almost look like they're dressed up in like what we were talking about in like colonial times, right? It looks almost like the same exact type of dress and outfit. This guy is representing the Budapest religion. He's dressed up in his formal garb. And here is somebody from Rome or the bus going by, guys. I am on a street, so if it's lagging, guys, I'm sorry. Um, this guy is ancient Rome, like the Apollo god of the sun is what he is supposed to be. He is holding a wooden gun here. And this is Dimitri the Enzon. Uh-oh. Vincenzo the Gondolier. 
And if you go look at these guys, whenever you guys go to, if you ever make it to Venice, Italy, he's representing the people who row the boats in Venice, which is really, really neat. Uh oh. Can somebody tell me who this guy is and who he's holding? He's not holding a corn dog. Pinocchio, right. That is Geppetto and Pinocchio. So now we're going to just walk for a little bit more. I got to cross a few pieces of sidewalk before we get to the next one. So as you can see, all the way down the street, they have them. This is Kuzmon and Stana. I'm not 100% sure what they represent. Almost looks like a Norwegian family, maybe. Uh oh. Tell me what this guy's doing. I love the sound of these things. Bagpipes. That's right, Matthew's bagpipes. What street? Guys, I'm literally right on the street. It's all on the sidewalk. And they have some Christmas decorations out. This guy is called a Porsche Le Mans race driver. I wonder why they named him. I wonder why they named him Porsche. I don't know. <laughs> Here's a guy, Henry Harley Hank. Do you guys know why he might be considered, why they might have named him Harley Hank? No? Okay. So look, look at the logo. See the logo? It looks like looks like uh, the Harley Davidson logo. Some of them are wooden, some of them are cement. This guy is called the Toe Guy. Toe Guy Dave. So maybe he goes and collects all the sleighs after everybody's done and tows them back to wherever they go, right? Old fashioned service attendant. Guys, you are way too young to even remember this. I barely remember this. Um, if you go to a gas station, they used to pump your own gas. Or they used to pump the gas for you. So this is what this guy represents. Old-fashioned service attendant. Here is Rosie the Riveteer. She's dressed up as a auto worker. And of course, she's sponsored by Advanced Auto Parts. I should probably be getting paid if I keep telling them who's sponsors. I should have like ran some type of deal, right, guys? And this one, sorry. Uh, I know. All right, and this guy right here. This is more nurse for us. So we have to tip our cap all the nurses and medical workers out today, especially in. Uh, Pandemic is going on. And then right next to her, you got Serafina, patron saint of the disabled people. And then, of course, you got the nurse and the patient. What would it be without a doctor, right? So there you go. This is Dr. Anthony Fletcher, MD, sponsored by Patricia Fletcher. So I heard that if I keep walking this way, we got one right here. Here's Dr. Nick. And I think right through this gate. Oh, I see him. Walk right through this gate. Who are those people? Do you, have you guys ever seen the movie? Yes, yes, yes. So good. So you guys know the Wizard of Oz. So there's the Tin Man. There's Dorothy. There's the Scarecrow. And here is the Cowardly Lion. So tell me, tell me, which one did not have a brain? Do we remember? Okay, so who? The Scarecrow, right. The Scarecrow, who didn't have the heart? Tin Man, that's right. And what was the lion lacking? Does anybody remember that? Courage, good, good guys. All right, so now I'm gonna come up here and cross the street. So 
So this is a very busy street. So if you're in a city, tell me what that sign has to be over there. If you could all the way see it over there, what does that have to be for me to cross the street? Can you see it? Not a stop sign. Look both ways. Make sure you don't get hit by a car, right? It has to be a walk sign. Yeah, it has to walk. Be white. Okay. So, oh, this is funny. So, be warned, they don't want you to pet or feed the nutcrackers. Just in case. Because they do have teeth, I guess. If one of these things jump out at me, I'm going to like, I'm gonna be really scared, guys. Uh, this is an SVRTA uh, nutcracker. That is the local uh, bus service here in Steubenville and Weirton in that, our area. And if we keep walking, we're going to see, almost looks like a painter, if you can see him coming up. Divina, I think if a nutcracker jumps out at me, I, I don't think I'm going to stick around. This guy's Jack Frost. I don't know why he's called Jack Frost. He doesn't look like he's snowman. Maybe he should be called, like, Jack I Can't Paint on the Walls, because it looks like he's got so much paint on him and not on the walls. We are coming up on something in Steubenville that they're trying to do, a little bit of history here. I mean, I am a social studies teacher, right? So they are redoing the Grand Theater, which is a theater that was built way before I was born. And they're trying to redo it to refurbish it. And that's what this is building right here. Okay, so this guy, has anybody seen this movie? Let me get a little bit closer. What's that movie called with the guy with a half a mask on? Anybody? Forget. Okay, no. Okay, so it is the Phantom of the Opera. That's who, yes, Matthew, good job. Phantom of the Opera, Jaden, good job too. Now we're going to keep walking. So this lady was a movie star, Scarlett O'Hara, way before my time, again. Is that a real dress? Yeah, if yeah, it's a real dress. It's a real dress. I can't really move too much and to tap these people, but or tap the nutcrackers because I'm holding my, the computer. So from left to right, Dean Martin. Okay, so Dean Martin actually grew up in Steubenville, um, which is really really neat. He grew up here. Um, I heard that. Um, he came back a couple times. They do a festival for him. His daughter's always here for the Dean Martin Festival. And actor. Yep, Matthew, and actor. Yeah, or was, yeah. Frank Sinatra. I'm sure you guys have heard the song New York, New York, right? I'm pretty sure Frank Sinatra sings it. Sammy Davis Jr. And I just showed you guys the Rat Pack, and that's what they were called. Uh, Peter Lawford. If anybody is in the chat that can tell me who Peter Lawford is or Joey Bishop is, awesome because i don't i don't know those two no not bonus points for that come on ms connor she's always trying to make me give you guys bonus points all right and lois lane so if lois lane is here who do we think's next superman right so we got lois lane and then superman or as they got it as clark kent because we can't tell that that's Superman because he's wearing glasses, right? One of the most craziest things I've ever tried to figure out, how you don't know somebody's Superman whenever he puts on a pair of glasses. But magic movie, right? We got a steel worker. And the steel worker here represents the Stephenville in our area where we had a lot of steel mills in the 1940s. Um, and it really built our or built our villages and our towns around here. Unfortunately, now all the steel mills are almost all gone, and we don't see many steel workers where it was a main industry in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and now it's it's a shadow of his former self. So we got Farmer Fred. We were talking about farmers, right? We were talking about how farming is an industry in Ohio. Can somebody tell me what the biggest crop is in Ohio? Not wheat, corn, yeah, corn. And then did somebody remember what the second one was and it blew our minds? Yeah, soybeans, which is kind of crazy. 
oh, this guy looks like he should be on Pirates of the Caribbean, right? This is the Buccaneer. That's kind of cool. I think he needs a shave, though. I, I could be wrong. All right, got to cross here again, guys. I see a chef coming up. But well, first, we're going to take a look at these guys. And this is Martin Luther. And you might be saying, well, that's not Martin Luther King Jr. No, it's not. Martin Luther was somebody who did a lot of things whenever in Great Britain and England. Not Harry Potter. So then we're going to move over here. John Calvin. He almost looks like a rabbi. Is it cold here? It's not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. But it's cold. But I'm not freezing yet. If, I, if my teeth start chattering, you know it's going to be cold. So then, the last one. Oh, no, this isn't the last one. We have Artopius the Baker making a cake. Anybody want to try that cake? Kaylee wants to try that cake. Kaylee, you might like lose your teeth because I'm pretty sure it's made out of wood or cement. I would recommend not biting into it. Okay, so now we're going to come down here and we're going to go into we're going to go into the church's yard here, and they have Saint Paul the Second. He was a pope for most of my life. He was the pope. Next to him is Bastian, the Swiss guard. But behind them, we have, there's the three wise men and the nativ nativity scene. And we have a nutcracker, almost like praying, right? Then we have Sunshine. Uh, can anybody tell me why they might have named her Sunshine? Look at the colors, guys. Come on. Look at the colors. Look how colorful she is, right? I would guess that's probably why they named her Sunshine. Then we have St. Paul. St. Francis. And Mother Teresa. Has anybody heard of Mother Teresa? Can somebody tell me? No? Mother Teresa was a very, very generous woman and worked hand to hand in helping everybody across the world. Um, that's who she was. This is St. Padre Pio and St. Juniper Sarah. So now oh, I can't go this way. So now I got to backtrack, guys. So I apologize. I would trip over to Christmas lights there if I tried going that way. That wouldn't be fun for anybody. Well, you guys might laugh. Uh, now I'm going to cross the street to one of probably my worst nutcrackers that I see. So what do we got to do when we look go across the street, guys? What do we got to do? What do we got to do, guys, when we, when we cross the street? Look both ways, right? Nothing coming, nothing coming. I'm going to cross the street. All right. So, yeah, there's this one. He's not my favorite, obviously, right? So that's that one. I'm not even going to say who he is. And this is Tom Abernathy. He was WSTV's Voice of the Valley. So he was a very famous guy on the radio here. Let's see, go Browns. And what? Victory Monday, right? If we have Victory Monday, no homework. Unfortunately, the Browns have been not letting us do that for a while. So this is a basketball player named Hank. And he is representing the local college, Franciscan University here. Um, so that's Hank. No last name, number 14. This is Moses Fleetwood Walker. He was a very famous baseball player that came from Steubenville. I, I don't want to tell you something wrong, so I'm just going to leave it at that because I'm not 100% sure on my facts on him. But... I, I believe he was one of the first African Americans to play baseball. Okay, so this guy is the fighting Irish nutcracker. And 
we're going to keep walking. As you can see, they're lined on both sides of the street here. We got a golfer. Mad Dog O Shanker. It almost sounds like how I golf. So that's kind of cool. He's a golfer. And not to be undone, here's a soccer player. His name is literally Soccer Player. I think they spent a long time trying to name him. And here is something from Edison, our lo one of the local schools. It's called Ed the Wildcat. Why so I don't know why Soccer Player, that's what, that was the name. They didn't say they must not have named him. But that's kind of cool. This guy's, this Nutcracker's dressed up like a, like a wildcat, and that's what their nickname is. Here's JVS Nutcracker. JVS is a local school here that uh, is a joint vocational school. They teach you trades. Like I was telling you guys, you don't necessarily have to go to college, but you need to figure out what you want to do, and you can go to a trade school. And JVS gets you a good start on that here in Ohio Valley. Uh, Brentwood Celebrate Recovery Nutcracker. That's what this one's named. Uh, he kind of looks like he came from New Orleans, because remember how we were talking about the French quarters and how the French were in Louisiana? That's the same symbol, right? So that would be that would be almost like a French person. Uh-oh. This looks like me in the summertime, guys. Mr. Fish. I don't know why he's called Mr. Fish. He doesn't have a fish. It almost looks like he got wrapped in, like he caught himself, right? The net's like all through him and it's crazy but that's mr fish and here's one called just m media m media is a is a broadcast uh production company here in the ohio valley they make commercials i mean i should be getting like a sponsorship right i should be getting paid to say all these things dr barry m chemical uh, this is just looks almost like a scientist. And remember, you got to be safe though when we're doing science, right? You got to make sure you have your goggles on. You should probably have a mask on. I, I don't know if Nutcrackers wear gloves, but you know, he's just holding it with like without fingers. So maybe they don't have gloves to fit him. I don't know. All right. So we're about halfway through, guys. This one is called Ms. Adelaide. Right next to him is Mr. Dominic as I fall into a hole. Mr. Dominic. And then Candy Cane. This is Candy Cane. It almost looks like she could be like a flight attendant, maybe. Maybe that's what they're they're trying to get off like here. And then we're gonna keep on walking. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of a walk. But the cool thing is when you walk, just because they're not on the streets, they're in the buildings. So that's kind of neat too. Here's a yoga place that has nutcrackers. Her claws. So there's that one in a building. Uh-oh. So have you guys brushed your teeth today? If you haven't, I think this guy is going to come and tell you about it. So this guy is called Dr. Sweets. He's a dentist, obviously. That's a big toothbrush, isn't it? Guys, don't don't answer if you haven't brushed your teeth yet. Like I was just joking. <laughs> uh, this is Doctor Sweets. He's a dentist, and then right next to him. So if you lose a tooth, you put it under a pillow, right? And the tooth fairy comes. So this is the tooth fairy. This guy right next to her is called Chow. Uh, oh, he got braces. You see that, guys? See how he has braces? That's pretty neat. So the Nutcracker has braces. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. So we're going to turn right here. This guy, Gertrude Lee Candies. Candyman Eddie Riley is what this Nutcracker is called. Uh-oh. And right next to him, Snowy the Square Snowman. I don't think you want that candy cane. It's probably been out here for a long time. But that's, that's a snowman. Then we have St. Anthony Hawk Catholic School student. I can't tell you much about St. Anthony Catholic School. 
I think that was way before me. I think. I, I, I don't know. Um, right next to him is Bishop Musio. So this is following, uh, like in the Catholic, where you would have a bishop above a priest, as far as a like pecking order, I guess, goes. Right next to him is the Toronto Red Knight. He's ready to do some battle. I think some of you guys would be excited to see this. I don't know if you guys play Fortnite. I think Fortnite's like done and over with, right, guys? But Minecraft, this guy may have like mined a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, somebody wanted to be a, a warrior in in the, uh, the holiday showcase. That we don't put warriors in there. Here's a Harrison Central Husky. So this is a, a another sponsored school. I think I give the, my tip my cap to uh, Edison because they actually made their nutcracker dress up as a wildcat. I, this guy does not look like a husky to me. So that's the Harrison Central Husky, and that's their logo in the middle. It's a local school around here. This is Jefferson Union Yellow Jacket. Okay, so remember the Edison Wildcat that I showed you earlier? This is the high school before it was Edison High, before it was Edison. So that's kind of neat, a little bit of history there. Next guy up is the Spirit of Christmas Past. So have you guys seen that movie? Where did Christmas Past comes and visits? Well, well, here he is. That's the spirit of Christmas past. And if we keep walking, you can see our courthouse. And if you see that statue all the way over there, I'm going to tell you a pretty interesting story about that statue when we get to it. This is a lighthouse nutcracker. My guess is it's because he has a lighthouse on his hat. All right, we're crossing another street here, guys. So I'm going to look both ways to make sure I don't get run over. Now we got Bruin Nutcracker. So here's the Bruin Nutcracker. All right. So this is another high school across the river called the Brook Bruins. And again, the Edison Wildcat dressed up as a Wildcat. This guy is not a Bruin. So I'm still going towards the Edison Wildcat Nutcracker so far. The Madonna Blue Dons, I think maybe him and the Toronto Red Knights should fight. That would be fun, right? So this is the Madonna Blue Dons. This is another high school in our area. How many guys have you heard the Little Drummer Boy song? This is the Indian Creek Redskins Little Drummer Boy, dressed up as a band member. All right, and we're going to keep walking, and we're almost to the point where it's, like, awesome, because they used to have a fountain there, but now they have a giant Christmas tree. These are all the nutcrackers, and we're going to come close to almost to the end. Here's a crusader. Man, you think you got a crusader here, you got a Toronto Red Knight, and you got the Wirton Madonna Blue Dons. They would have like a fierce battle going on. And here's one from Soonville Big Red. Roll, red, roll. They're our biggest school in Ohio and Jefferson County. Maybe several pools a little bit bigger, but they're one of the bigger schools here in the Ohio Valley. All right. So now, this is this is shit. this is going to be hard to show this one after last Saturday. But here's Buckeye Pride, the Ohio State Buckeyes, and coming up, we got somebody dressed up as a Gator, which is really really cool. This is the Eastern Gateway Community College Gator. I think that one's cool too because he's dressed up as a Gator. We have Wally EMG or EMT. If I could read cursive, guys, I'd, it'd be a little bit better. But this is Wally EMT. He's dressed up as a emergency service personnel. And now we're coming up on the police department. So anybody want to take a guess on what the Nutcrackers are going to be when we get in front of the police department? Cop, right? Police. Yep. Here's Patrolman H. Holiday. I think I can outrun him, guys. I think. And and plus, like, his gun. I, I don't think he's doing much. I don't think he's doing too much patrolling nowadays. I think he might be retired. And right next to him is Fireman Frank. Can anybody tell me what that hook is used for? Does anybody know? 
fire menus? Not no, not the pool people prank. <laughs> that would hurt. Yeah, to either pull out fire, or take down walls, or, or stuff like that. They have to use it to, to, uh, to get the places in a fire if they need to. All right, so here's something cool, guys. So we're gonna be walking over to something called Fort Steuben Park, okay? And maybe in the summer or whenever it gets warmer out in the spring, we can do a field trip to Fort Steuben because that would be kind of neat. But it's an old, old recreated fort that they made it look like in the, from the 1700s, which is really neat. And we were talking about that, the colonial times. So now we're coming up on a couple other ones that we're just going to walk around here. Here's Shirley Temple. Anybody remember Shirley Temple? I don't remember Shirley Temple, but maybe you saw some of her movies. Remember? Okay, cool, cool. Here's a guy. He's a rocker. She's a rocker. Rosie. No, that's not a rocker. Sorry, I thought that was I thought that was a guy from Kiss from this side. <laughs> All right, so this is Rosie. She's a hairdresser. See the scissors in her hands. And there's a big Christmas tree right in the middle. And a Noel sign. And this is really cool whenever it's at night, guys. They have this all lit up with Christmas lights and everything. Here's the Banks family, sponsored by a bank. I don't think there's anything special about it other than the fact that there's four and they just called them the Banks people. And that's it. Oh, no, there's two more over here. Who wants to give this baby Christmas? Huh? Who wants, who wants to have that big of a Christmas gift? All right, so now we have... Hooray. Sponsored by Mrs. Elf. All right. The next one is Val the Barber of the Ville. So, do you guys remember barber shops having these rotating signs? Red and white and blue. Yeah, well, a lot of them don't have them anymore, but that was something neat. All right, so now we're going to cross the street again and we're going to make our way back so we can talk to the wood carver who carved some of these statues. But on our way back, we'll walk down the other side of the street and show you what's over there. And I have to stop and wait for the walk sign to cross the street. But do you see that? I can't see you very good. But you see the statue over there? No. Yeah, it's hard to see. I'm sorry there's a law here, guys. I just can't. I can't cross the street yet. I'm not trying to get hit by a car. These are the longest red lights in the entire world, I think. Oh, I can walk now. All right. All right. So now we're going to cross here and I'm going to show you the statue. So we were talking about the Civil War and Abraham Lincoln. So the statue, I'm trying to see if you can see it. The statue is Edwin Stanton, okay? Um, he was born here in Steubenville, and he was the Secretary of War for Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. So what that meant, guys, was he was in charge of the Army. He was in charge of the Army during that time. And Abraham Lincoln actually visited Steubenville on February 14th in 1861 on his way to the presidential inauguration. So actually, and what happened was, remember, whenever, whenever Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, they took the same route back that he went on his inauguration. So he actually passed through here twice, once before the assassination and once after the assassination. So here's a military uni uniform. Anybody tell me? what uniform that is and what she's representing. Maybe if I come over here and show you the side. 
Anybody know? Not the Army, not the Navy, not the police. Plane. Air Force, good. This is Air Force Airman First Class Elizabeth. The next one, somebody tell me what this guy is. This one should be pretty easy, guys. They have a lot of commercials on TV. Anybody know? Not a cop. Marines, good job, Seth. So yeah, this guy is called Leatherneck. He is, he is a Marine and he has a sword. So again, this guy and all the knights over on the other side should like start fighting. This guy is called Start Special Taxes and Rec Rescue Training Guy. He is somebody they actually do sponsorships and train people for how to handle guns and stuff here in the Ohio Valley. This guy is called Mistletoe. I should probably tell him that I'm married, huh? Since it looks like he's proposing to me. Next one is Della. Uh oh. And Jim. I, I can't let my wife see this, right? She might get mad. So we're gonna we're gonna run away from those ones. This guy is Patrick Marshall. He's a Jefferson County auditor. So can somebody tell me what the auditor does? What does he work with all the time? Not people. Well, yeah, people. Ta okay, so Matthew, numbers, right? Numbers. He works with numbers. Here's Francesca the Lawyer. And here is Judge Miller. And we're gonna go a couple a couple more steps down. We're gonna go across and find another guy, another unit of our military. Anybody have an idea of what this guy is? Who he's representing? Not the Navy. Not the Air Force, not the National Guard. He is actually the Coast Guard, Coasty Jim. So we got Jim getting married over there, and we got Coasty Jim right here. Next guy. Okay, so everybody should get this one. Everybody should know this guy. What does he represent? Not the Navy. The Army. Good job, guys. He's the Army. This is Captain Matthew. And now, finally, finally, what does this guy represent? He'll be the last branch of our military. Navy, that's right. This guy is a Navy man. And as you can see, he's taking all his belongings in a bag because he's going to be at sea for a long time. All right. So now we're going to cross another street. And we're almost done. we got one more street to go. We're going to walk across where they're doing a little bit of construction. There are no nutcrackers here, so I apologize. Oh, I take that back. There's one coming up. Okay, guys, so now my teeth might be chattering a little bit, but that's okay. Here's Bugs Bonafed, the builder. So that's kind of neat, right? They put a builder right where they're doing all the construction. Makes sense to me. Maybe he can help. I wonder if he was any related to Bob the Builder. I don't know. Here's an AEP guy. AEP is a local electric company here. Yeah, you're allowed to eat. Dude, did anybody ask me that? I need to eat. Yeah, you can eat while you're watching this. Just don't get spaghetti sauce or whatever you're eating over your keyboard. Uh-oh, I see somebody coming up that everybody should know again. He has a Christmas special. Who's that guy? Not Santa. No, it's not raining here. Charlie Brown. This guy's Charlie Brown. And we have somebody representing the Chinese restaurant right here. She's named China Doll. Dressed in her Chinese garb. If you go to the library, I'm pretty sure she's going to help you, the librarian. 
walk in a little bit more. There's a lot of hairdressing nutcrackers. Hairdresser Sue. Next guy is, oh, okay. Jake from State Farm. I don't believe that's who's on the phone. It's Jake from State Farm. Oh, yeah, Jake, someone from State Farm. What are you wearing? Well, he's wearing khaki pants, right? So we talked about we talked about this guy when we were talking about famous people from Ohio. Who's the who's the astronauts from Ohio? Do you guys remember? Buzz Aldridge wasn't from Ohio. Neil Armstrong. One more. He was the first man to orbit the Earth. John Glenn. Good job, Seth. This is John Glenn. That's John Glenn. He's not a nutcracker, but he's looking at us. I'm just gonna act, I'm gonna tell him that I was a I was good this year, so that way I could get lots of toys at Christmas time. Here's a peacock. Has anybody seen a peacock like lift all their feathers up? Brea, tell me why, tell me why they would do that. Why would a peacock put all their feathers up? Yeah, it does do that. What is, what's another thing? What's another thing that they might put it in defense? Good. It's a def defense mechanism too. So here's shown. And that says, be your own kind of beautiful right there with a mirror. And there's me. Okay, so that's that guy. Oh, who has seen the movie? If I ask you guys, I'll be back. What movie is that from? Anybody know? I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. Oh, the Terminator, Matthew, right. And there's the Terminator. He's actually called the Terminator, but that's okay. But that's the Terminator. Half robot, half nutcracker. Here are the people I was talking about earlier, guys. So here's Slash. He's a rocker from a rock and roll band. Here's Starman. Here's McBain Nutcracker. That guy's just sponsored by McBain Insurance. Ooh, something smells good around here, guys. It might be lunchtime for me, too. Benjamin Franklin. Somebody tell me what Benjamin Franklin did. What did he help write? What did Benjamin Franklin help write? He didn't make money. Well, he, no, he didn't make money. The Declaration. Good job. Good job. Here is Luzu Bailey. She's sponsored by a little elementary school. And here is George Bailey. I'm going to guess that's her dad. That's just a guess since they have the same last name. I could be wrong. All right. So now we're going to wrap it up here pretty good. Here is Johnny Appleseed. You guys were asking me about Johnny Appleseed, weren't you, a few weeks ago? Well, here is Johnny Appleseed. So... Here's Barbarian of the Woodsman, and then there's a giant mouse coming up, too. I got to show you guys. So here is Barbarian of the Woodsman and the Choo Choo Train Engineer. Okay. So now we're coming up, and we got Clara and the Nutcracker Prince and then the Mouse King. This guy looks like the guy you beat on Mario Brothers 2, if you guys ever played it. The giant mouse at the end. That's what he looks like. And then there's a there's a Christmas sleigh. And it's an antique sleigh. So you're not allowed to sit on it. All right, guys. So that's that's the whole entire tour of walking around the village. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross the street again and we're gonna actually talk to the person who carves them. And that's something that will be pretty neat. So if you guys have questions or anything, keep that in mind. So there might be a little bit law here while I get set up. So I'm going to be here, guys, but I'm going to turn off the camera for right now. And I'm going to turn off my mic. Maybe. Oh, no, I'm not. It's okay. All right. So now we're still here. Okay. I'm still live. 
So is he here or? He's coming back. He's coming back. Okay. Okay. So, yep, that's perfectly fine. That's, so, guys, do you guys have any questions for me? So I'll just sit down here and show you the, uh, what's your question? Wait, I just lost the public chat. Okay, so this is the village that they have here. They have like a little shop, which is kind of nice. So we're going to kill a little bit of time while he shows up. Is it lit at night? Yes, it is. It's all lit up. They have Christmas lights and everything. It makes it festivals and stuff. Do I live here? Yes, I live about 20 minutes from here. So they even have like small little nutcrackers that you could buy. They have an ornament. You guys were showing me all your ornaments on the Christmas tree. And there is some other, some more nutcrackers. Some mugs with nutcrackers on them. I think you guys are getting a point that this is Nutcracker Village, right? It's a lot of them. And then they have little things like that and some more nutcrackers. So bear with me, guys, until that guy shows up. And then we can ask him how he carves the, carves the uh, nutcrackers. So what questions might you have for him while we're waiting? Do they hand? Okay, so remember those questions. Remember, those are all, those are good questions. Those are all good questions, guys. All right, so I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to turn the camera around on myself. So, did he do it by himself? Those are good questions. Hi, guys. Those are all good questions. I got my exercise in too, guys, so that's a good thing. And what's really neat is they have a, a popcorn place right next door. And you can eat popcorn while you take the walk. Um, are you okay? I'm okay. Yeah, I did. I'm okay. It was cold. My face cold, but that's okay. It was worth it, right? It was worth to see all that stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Hold on. We got, we got somebody else. So let me unplug my headphone. All right, guys, so we have here a person who hand paints them. Let me do this. Um, fun, eventually, there it is. <clears throat> so she hand paints them. So, what, what were your questions about that? Hi guys! This is my first online classroom <laughs> since I was a kid. I did online school in Ohio too. So I think somebody said how long it took you to paint it. Okay, the painting part probably takes about five hours, I would say, maximum. Um, sometimes it takes us a few days, depending on what we're doing. We have to wait for layers of paint to dry and then uh, add add more details after one layer is dry. Um, the bigger nutcrackers take a lot longer than the small nutcrackers. So the mouse king versus Fermi is probably a five hour difference right there. Wow. <laughs> so how long have you been doing this? Uh, this is year seven for us. Um, the first year we made 37 nutcrackers and we only found out we were doing it, I think the beginning of November. Um, so we built all 37 nutcrackers in about a month. Um, and then the next year we built 75 more, the third year we built uh, 50 more nutcrackers, and then ever since then we've done maybe 10, 10 nutcrackers a year. Um, this year we only did four. Okay. 
when when did okay so you answered that um first time you ever carved one have you been carving right? yeah right any carving so the guy who's he's on his way he'll tell you how he yeah. carved them do you take requests for characters of a nutcracker yes we do um every nutcracker that's out there actually is was someone's request um except sometimes we get duplicate nutcracker requests so we'll try and be creative with somebody so for instance we made a dentist nutcracker and then somebody else requested a dentist nutcracker um and so we suggested doing a tooth fairy to represent them and then a third person requested a dentist nutcracker and we suggested Hermie um because he wanted to be a dentist so kind of being creative with the ideas that people present us um to make a nutcracker that's lovable by everyone even mm -hmm. if they're not a dentist or not into dentists so. somebody asked are you allowed to touch the nutcrackers um we tell people that the nutcrackers bite uh, mostly to keep you from touching the nutcrackers. Um, traditional nutcrackers do bite, so their mouths will open. I don't know if you can see that one on there. There you go. Um, so they do open and close. Our nutcrackers were intentionally made not to open and close, um, simply because we were worried about the things that might get put in their mouths if they did open mm -hmm. and close. So. Um, anything else? Do you do it by yourself? Uh, I've done a lot of the painting by myself, yeah. I have um, nine siblings, and eight of them are younger than me so i have taught a lot of my little siblings um kind of the art of making the nutcrackers and um i have yeah, two, a 15 year old brother and a 17 year old brother and both of them um are learning how to carve them and learning how to paint them what type of paint is used uh depends on the nutcracker but it's all outdoor paint so a lot of it is um Lestolian spray paint and krylon spray paint um krylon has a lot more colors Lestolian lasts a lot longer and then for the hand painting that we do, um, usually we get little jars of Rustoleum. Um, it's all oil-based because they have to be outside for mm -hmm. the whole winter season. So. Okay. So I think, guys, what we're going to do on that note, we're going to wrap it up. Okay? Because I know a lot of you guys are saying that uh, you got to go to another class. So uh, everybody tell her thank you. Thanks for coming to visit, guys. So they're all saying thank you. All right, guys, so that's the Nutcracker Village field trip. Um, I hope you guys had fun. Uh, and if one of my other teachers can close the conference for me, um, because I'm limited with my Wi-Fi here. So I'll see everybody later, okay? Bye-bye, guys. I hope you had fun.